Since I've come to know you and your teachings, you've helped me remember so many beautiful things that have caused me to live my life in a totally different way. Yeah. The thing that I appreciate the most is you've taught me how worthy I am, how loved I am, and how self-appreciation puts me in alignment faster than anything else I can ever do. And then the evidence just compounds it, doesn't it? Evidence all yes. around you all the time. Yes. Supporting what you've finally accepted. Yes. Yeah. My question yeah. is, I have those in my life that I love very much. Yeah that have not learned this yet. It's all right. Pay no attention to me. <laughs> oh is there any word you can offer me that can help me? Yeah, don't to think about them? that. <laughs> because because in you you just contradicted your first statement with your second statement. In other words, I can find alignment and I can feel my own worthiness, but in the moment that you look at someone that isn't feeling that way, you lose yours too. Ah. Uh. Yes. And then you and then you can't and then you can't inspire it in them. How it feels can I... so tricky, doesn't it? But yes. it really isn't. It really isn't. Abraham, are you saying that self-love is the path to others loving themselves? Yes. Oh, I thought I needed to love them. Well, it's lovely to love them, but love them for yourself. Don't love them. Love them for your love them for yourself, you see. Because you, you can't control anyone else's mix of vibration. But you can get so wobble free that you have this, this vibration that emanates from you that is unrestricted and is unfettered and is not wobbling. Even when you're, even when you're with them and they're not loving themselves, then if you're still loving them, then you have the benefit of the leverage of alignment. You've heard us say, we've said it in different ways. One who's connected to this stream of well-being is more powerful than millions who are not. So there's a big difference, isn't there, between really loving someone and wanting to love them. There's a really difference. There's a big difference between meaning to love them and loving them. And in the same way that you discovered, you said, my favorite thing that's happened to me is that you have helped me to love myself now. You just got to hang on to, to that because you remember when you weren't doing that and mm -hmm. now you are. That's what, this is what unconditional love is. I, I am allowing my alignment with source, even though I'm, you're, I'm focused on you as my object of attention and you're out of whack in some way because the other is conditional. I need you to love yourself before I'm really finally complete. Abraham helped me almost be complete, but now there are people in my life that, that don't love themselves. And so I need you to love yourself so that I can really be complete. So I found a way to love myself, but I see you not loving yourself. So now I don't feel so good, which means now I'm not loving myself, but I need you. That's that same old conditional love old, trap yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah. That same old thing. You need to feel differently. I, and even worse, I need to find a way that I can teach you to be different because I'm taking upon myself the responsibility of how all of you feel especially if you're my lover if you're my child or if you're my mother or if you're my friend it's my responsibility that you be well and if you're not well I must have failed you in some way you're not loving yourself with thoughts like that no. you're taking on responsibilities that were never yours you have a singular intention and that is alignment with the source within you and when you accomplish that steadily even under very difficult conditions you will be able to look at someone and love them to, to look at someone in trouble and not worry is the key. And they'll say, oh, you don't care about me. You don't care about me. No, I'm just keeping my distance from you because when you're up close, I worry. So at a distance, I am able to maintain my wobble free. And that's the best I've got to give you. That's all I've got to give you. So, so many people are in service. So they're so in service that they are entrenched with problems and then they, and then they are not in alignment and then they have nothing to give. They have nothing to give and things don't get better. This is a really easy to understand concept, isn't it? But it's sort of counter to what you've been taught because they said to you, don't be selfish. And Abraham says, you got to be selfish. And they say, you got to give me your undivided attention because I'm needy. And Abraham says, don't give them your undivided attention. Give your alignment your undivided attention. And then anything else you have time for once you accomplish alignment. 
and oh, it's going to flip for you in such a fantastic way because once you find a way to consistently be in alignment, then it, you don't feel guarded getting out in the world and holding anything and everything as your object of attention because it doesn't hurt you anymore. It enlivens you. You, you can look right in the midst of a really serious problem and be so solution-oriented that the problem inspires you rather than hurts you, you see. You're on the brink of feeling like that because otherwise you get more guarded, more guarded back into your own little corners, back into your, back into your protective place. I'm afraid to go out because I don't want to lose my connection. And we say, we'll go back there and find it and then come out. And then, and when, then when you lose it, step back into the wobble-free zone and then come out again. And when you lose it, step back into the wobble-free zone and then come out again. And before, until before long, you will have such momentum on subject after subject after subject after subject after subject that you will finally find the freedom that you've always been looking for. The freedom to feel good no matter Very what. Much. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Enough? Um, I have one more. Yeah. Another thing I appreciate that you've taught me is that there's no judgment with source. I love that. I love that so much. We want to give you little different words, and then we want you to say that again. Okay. These are the different words that we want to give you. Rather than another thing that you've taught me, oh, yeah. another thing that I found resonance with when I hung around in the vibration of that. Okay. Another thing that I realized. Another thing that I practiced myself into the vibration of realizing. Because we can't teach you mm -hmm. anything. It's yes. all you. I feel like I remembered it. I just oh, remembered you it. Just, you just found the vibrational the resonance of it and you knew it. Yes. You felt the familiarity of it, you see. And, that's, that, and so what was it that you've enjoyed realizing? What is it? That there's no judgment with source. There's, there's nothing that's out of place with source. Source loves everything. So let's say all. that in the new vernacular of this workshop. Source doesn't wobble. Source doesn't wobble. So my question is about that. I find myself judging those who judge. <laughs> and I don't like that. Yeah. Any words you can help me with that? <laughs> don't do that. I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm aware of it, though, and I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> well, first of all, you see, this is, the, this is really fun because you said... I find myself judging those who judge, yeah. but it's deeper than that. Okay. You're judging yourself for judging them. Yes, exactly. Yes. In other words, that, that, that's, that's that self-condemnation, mm -hmm. which flies in the face of what you just said to us when you first sat down. You said, you, you've helped me to love myself. And so, mm -hmm. so now you're saying, you've helped me to love myself, and I do it mostly, but every now and again, there's a really hard case out there, and <laughs> someone really challenges my belief. <laughs> Somebody really challenges, mm -hmm. challenges my alignment, my alignment. Mm -hmm. And we say... So bless them. Feel, feel thankful for the fact that they are pointing out to you that, that you got a little wobble there because how are, you gonna, how are you going to resolve the wobbles if you're not even aware that they are there? Good, yes. Beautiful. And so, <laughs> and isn't a wobble really like contrast? It's all part of all of it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you just said you like how source doesn't judge. Mm -hmm. And so, and and. The reason that you like it is because it feels good in the realization of it, mm -hmm. you see. So, you want to take a situation and let's walk through it? Hmm, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> um, okay, I'm having a conversation with someone, and um, the conversation is going along rather well, and then the other might mention um, a comment about a segment of our population in a certain way, and I'm finding that... And that feels offensive that to That feels you. offensive to me. And yet, I, then at that same time, I think, well, I'm doing exactly what they're doing because I'm judging their, their view, their viewpoint. I'm judging their viewpoint. And that's so, what I want to So stop. the easiest thing, so when you realize that, that your intention isn't to change their mind. No. And your intention isn't to set them straight. No. Even if, even if they're not loving themselves enough, your intention isn't to set them straight. Because when your intention is to set someone straight, you're focused right upon the thing that you think needs to be fixed in order for them to come into alignment. So you're actually amplifying the wobble rather than the solution. So your intention in that moment is not to set them straight. Your intention in that moment is to be able to love them anyway. anyway. So here's a, a, a 
concept, a sentence, uh, giving someone the benefit of the doubt. You, you sort of get a sense of why that is. F looking for looking for a re way to give them the benefit of the doubt. S the statements in your own mind that sort of soothe the wobble, such as, I don't know how life has touched them, and I don't know what their upbringing really was, and I don't know how they've come to this. I don't know how they developed a belief that is so contrary to what the source within them knows. I don't know how that happened. But we all do that as humans. We all develop beliefs that are contrary to what the source within us knows. And I'll bet, you can say to yourself, that in that discord, they are really uncomfortable. And I would like them to not be uncomfortable. I would like them to be soothed. But that's not my job. My job is to soothe me. So you don't jump in the middle of it. You don't have a discussion about it. You, you don't sit there in silent disgust or discomfort either. You soothe yourself. You soothe yourself with your own mind. It's like you see in the movies, you see in the movies where there's a scene and the, the movie director lets you know what's in the mind of all the people around the table. You hear the conversation, but then the movie lets you hear what's in the minds of the people. What are they actually thinking? Well, you just withdraw from the conversation and give your attention to what's going on in your mind and bring yourself back into alignment. I don't know what they really mean. I might even be misunderstanding them. They might not mean it in the way it sounded. Um, it's not my job to figure that out anyway. What I want is alignment. It's what they want too. We have that in common. Bless their hearts. They are still in that painful trap of believing that we all need to be the same in order for them to feel good. I'm so glad I'm not in that trap anymore where right. everybody needs to be the same. Yeah. So the subject of their discourse doesn't need to be the same and them not knowing what I know doesn't need to be the same either. Interesting, isn't yeah. it? Not nice to know.